Her name was Jeannie. She was the first convert in West Virginia. The first fruits of the ministry of an apostle by the name of Lauren Ham. Even though she was limited, as some people consider opportunities, she had won more than 100 people to the way of self-denial and the cross in the first decade of her ministry. She became the principal soloist at a fellowship in West Virginia in a little village called Scott Depot under the ministry of Oliver and Barbara Hogue. That was after it was discovered that she had a beautiful voice for singing. And eventually, she became a soloist for the entourage that traveled the world and witnessed in the ministry of Lorne W. Ham. His name was Apinatus. He was the first convert in Asia Minor. The name of the village was Ephesus. And he probably was converted when Aquila and Priscilla and Paul came to that fair city. And like Jeannie, two thousands of years later, he was well loved. Who can forget a first convert? Who can appreciate a first convert? Who has remembered a first convert? I say, Brother Hogue, there are many believers in that area. Yes, but under Paul's ministry, as far as a convert being one to the way of the cross, this man, Epinetus, was the first. And though he may not have been one directly, by the Apostle Paul. It certainly was in the context of Aquila and Priscilla and Paul's going to the city of Ephesus after they left Corinth. He was the first. The Holy Spirit thought it important enough to put his name in the good book. Though there's no other reference from Genesis to Revelation, his name is mentioned at least once. And not many of the billions of citizens over this earth have had their name in this good book. But a penitus had his name in there. Must have been very close to the Apostle Paul. Well loved. That didn't mean that all of the other 26 names mentioned were not well loved, but it meant that there was something special, some special relationship that God had given that caused the Holy Spirit to write through the pen that was being written, to speak through the voice that was being spoken and mention this man's name, that it might be immortalized in these pages and say of this man, he was well loved. And he was a first convert. It's very probable that when Aquila and Priscilla left for Rome, out of the city of Ephesus, that he left with them. That's what some scholars think. That's why you see his name next. 
He starts those greetings with, I commend unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saints, and that you assist her in whatsoever business she had need of. For she hath been a helper of many, and of myself also. Greet, and you must know that the word is Prisca by now. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the assembly that is in their house, And after remembering them, he remembers someone else. For it's very probable that he went back to Rome with them. The first convert. Sometimes the first converts attach themselves to the pastors and to the evangelists as if they were their own mother and father. They attach themselves in such a way that Everybody in that village knows that they love those persons as if they were their own family. Such was the love of this man for Priscilla and Aquila and the Apostle Paul. So wonderful was his relationship to this great apostle that out of no doubt by now the thousands that he knew maybe not in Rome, but across the country. He mentions his name. And he mentions his name not only because he thought of his name, he mentions his name because he was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write his name when he wrote to the church at Rome so that you and I would hear it tonight. And that you and I may be so inspired in our conversion, whether we were first converts or part of the first fruits to attach ourselves to those who are like Aquila and Priscilla and those who are like Paul and move to distant cities to spread the word of God. Indeed, throughout the entire world, want to be like New Testament Christianity? then be like these people. Want to be like something else? You've got it. From Washington, D.C. to San Diego. And from the state of Washington to the state of Florida and indeed beyond. You can have it. But it, hadn't, it hasn't enough power in it to stir a sinner in the night. Salute my well-beloved Epinetus. So how'd you know how to pronounce that, Brother Hogue? I looked it up. So I know how to pronounce it. I want you to know that. I work hard on pronunciation. Sometimes the King James doesn't have the right one. I worked hard on it. The Greek Epinetus. In the English Epinetus who is the first convert. Say, well, what about that next word there? It's a misprint. It should be Asia. The first fruits of Asia unto Christ. Our fellowship is in Christ. First convert, second convert, or third. A hundred or a thousand. Those that know and love Christ are the ones that we identify with the face of this world over. They're the ones that know something about our heart. They're the ones that know something about our intentions. They're the ones that know something about seeking the first the kingdom of God. They're the ones that know something about the awfulness of sin. They're the ones crying for entire sanctification. They're the ones who are becoming less judgmental. They are the ones that God is building his church upon. Pitiful in man's sight, often despised, very often unappreciated. But let me tell you something. The gates of hell will not prevail against these. It's 
scum of the earth? Yes. Paul himself was considered the off-scouring. But in God's eyes, they are pristine pillars. Salute them. They belong to Christ. Daddy said, I just got started, folks. There ain't much in there about him. (laughs) Check my minutes. I did the best I could. (laughs) It was great. Oh, it's wonderful. I found the scripture. Dad said he just found the scripture. You know, there's a whole lot in what I said. And it helps us to understand the context of the writing of the book of Rome. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's let, uh, let's have the offering. And I'm excited about what the title of the offering is. I believe I'm reading it right here. It says, When God Speaks. You see, uh, considering, considering, the, considering that the Holy Spirit operated on what the choir sang, then how important were my words. Yes. You can't have a faith without hearing the preacher as a rule. There are a few Abrahams ever. But as a rule, it takes the preaching of the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit to have faith. How can they hear unless they have a preacher? If the choir, the Holy Spirit operated on, he's known by the heart. Then it says, if you'll hear his words, what was those last ones? If you'll hear his word, those last, that last phrase. What? If you will hear his words and let him rule the heart. Tremendous. So then my words become more weighty. Yes. 